That's like the same thing as people saying, if you like metal music, you're a Satanist. Well, and I agree. I agree because in our day we had what? Kiss. No, no, no. I don't agree that you're Satan. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. I agree that that's what it looks like because because they have people sugar. have to categorize but you have, you. But you have to understand that. that's what it looks like to me whenever I see a group of Christians because right. that's way more radical than anybody listening to some music. See, and because I, they're just, literally like, crazy. you will die and go to hell if you don't believe what I believe, and that's insane to me. It's not that you don't believe what I believe. And that's exactly what it it's is. It's not. It's not. It a is. true Christian will not tell you that. Well, I've a, never met a true one Christian then. will not tell you that because a true Christian will never judge you and will never I guess I've never met a true Christian then. Well, I mean, we're all we all have faults. Everyone on this earth has faults. In what I believe is there's only one person that ever roamed this earth that didn't. But, in my experience, it's harbored more harmful for you. cult-like right. behavior. No, just in my experience with right. any a Christian group ever. I, I understand. It, it, it harvests that cult-like behavior. And the reason why people fall so easily into the cults is because it starts with, oh, we're just a church reading the Bible. And then it goes crazy. Or it starts with getting to the teenage level going, oh yeah, that sucks. You know what it's never started with? D every D. teenager that's ever lived, and I can tell you I had this same thing when I was a teenager, does not connect with their parents on every level. Right. I can tell you every teenager thinks their parents don't understand what they're going through. Every single one yeah. thinks that their parents is so untouched that they don't understand what they truly have to go through because they don't understand. And I can guarantee you I went through the same thing with my mother and my father because I thought they were so out of touch that they'd never understand. But they were a teenager once too. Granted, we did not have the same things going on right. as our parents, but our parents were a teenager that had their own views, that had to figure out how to grow but and maneuver. the reason why like, kids don't talk to their parents, and I think there's a big shift in that nowadays, at yeah, least there from is. the parents that there I've is. seen, is because parents create this field of separation of where you can't talk to me uh, because what you're thinking and believing and processing is not okay and wrong instead of just saying, hey, I won't judge you for the things that you're feeling or thinking or like. Because that's, I mean... And that's, to me, that was our backyard conversations whenever we used to have those, whenever you guys were... God, ever since we moved into that house yeah, from I, middle school on, we'd go on the back porch while I was smoking and we'd talk. And that to me was me saying, it's okay, you can talk. But it's not like that ever resulted in me telling you that, I don't know. I guess I just don't see this. I guess I, I saw it more than what you did, but I thought that I, was me opening up and saying, hey, I, I am here for you. I do love you. <laughs> there was a few times you got too graphic with me. And, and it's my fault that I was like, oh God. Because um, yes, I wanted you to be open with me, but then again, I didn't want to hear about my teenage daughter's sex life. Yeah. So it was a hard thing for me to go through because with my mother, I didn't talk about anything. Yeah. So I wanted you guys to be open, but there was like, oh, that's a little too open. <laughs> I always feel bad. So it was, like, it was hard for me to navigate because right. I didn't know how to. And probably some part of my childhood brain recognized that and was like, oh, I just won't talk about X, Y, Z. Or it was, my mom doesn't understand me or thinks I'm weird, so I'm never going to tell her anything again. Which and is something that I've struggled I, with my whole life because I've heard my whole I life from it. every single person that I've ever interacted with is you're weird, you don't fit into any of these boxes, how do I understand you? And I'm like, you're just... not weird. Okay, sure. <laughs> I don't think you're weird. I think the most recent box that I've just leaned into is the goth box because like... Oh, God. Yeah. If you're gonna call me goth, I can just wear whatever I want then. <laughs> and to me, all goth was what you wore all black. It That's all it was to me. I wish. It's so, it's so expensive because you look up goth chicks on the online and you're like, I wish I could wear stuff like that, but it's so expensive and so time consuming. People, see, I don't understand. I, I guess your not, definition of goth and mine is completely different because I think somebody who wears all black, that's well, goth. Well, 
That's because people are dumb. That's because people, there's different definitions. And it's there's fluid. not there's not different <laughs> definitions. It's English language is fluid. Words there's are fluid. There's not different definitions. People just use the word wrong. No. Because what they mean by goth is emo. Because wearing I don't a black t shirt, you can wear a black t shirt and nobody will say anything to you. Okay, what is emo? I'm not gonna get into the nuances of subculture. But I'm just saying, is like the the frustrating thing for me, okay. you wore a black t shirt. Literally nobody would call you a goth. Right. I wear a black t shirt. Right. Yesterday, I didn't wear a single fucking piece of clothing that was black. <laughs> you think I still got called goth because my shoes were black? Yeah. What? Always. Always. It does not matter what I wear. Wait, at work? Look, at 30 I'm not years old? I literally was, but I oh. would have been if I was okay. around other people. I didn't go around other like, people yesterday. I still do that? But I'm just saying, like, if I so happen to wear, like, the single most smallest piece of black, it yeah. is still like bald goth. But see... And it's just so frustrating because why do I have to have a label and nobody else has to have that label? Like, why? You know what I mean? Everybody has labels. It's You're not the only one It's to get almost it. like people use it as an insult. Well, I'm not... Well, I'm yeah, not, they are using it I'm as an insult. Like, but it's just so frustrating to me because, like, it's constantly just, like, being misunderstood like, by every single person in my whole life. Nobody understands me. And it's like, at that point, you're like... It's probably me. It's probably me that's wrong. I'm probably the wrong thing. And like, you can't live life that way. You can't live life thinking that you're the mistake that. Do you know at 52, created. I have that exact same thinking process in my mind constantly at 52? Well, I know, but it's just, it's got to where I just don't care. I mean, I started not caring. I say I don't care, care, but I immensely yeah, care. I actually don't care. I walked out of the bedroom today and asked your dad, hey, does this look okay to wear? And he house. turns around and he goes, fine. I said, you didn't even look at my whole outfit. Look at the shoes, the pants, the shirt. He's like, you're literally going to get And he goes, off. it's fine. You look comfortable. And I said, but if I was to go out in public, would this be okay to wear? We're not going out in public, right? And he goes, well, I don't know. Are you comfortable? I said, yes. He goes, okay. I don't know that I would wear those shoes. I was like, uh, so I should change my shoes. And he goes, no. <laughs> so even at this Not age. Not even going to wear shoes all day. I am very uncomfortable. Oh my God. These shoes. Well, your dad bought these shoes. And I thought he was crazy. Because they're called Hey Dudes. Not sponsored. They are amazing. <laughs> they are so comfortable. They're not good for people that have arch problems like I do. But they are so good. You could probably get inserts for that. I don't know. Because that's what makes them comfortable, is because they're like Crocs, almost. They're not plastic. Well, maybe you have like Crocs are. arch issues in a different way than what you're thinking. No, I do have. It's... Once I got that fitted thing in my shoe, that's... You can't take that out and put it in a different shoe? I don't know. Cause isn't it but I need a new one, because it's, it's, an it's been there for four years, and it's pretty worn out, so... Or five years? How long ago yeah, was that? I wish we could go back to being like barefoot. Remember those days? Back in the olden time? When was we barefoot? Before shoes were invented? When? You we know, like we weren't around. The 1600s? I don't know. <laughs> when shoes were invented. <laughs> back in the olden time. No, no. Time. Your dad, your grandpa actually went to school with no shoes. So, speaking of shoes. I hate shoes. I take them off I really don't. every time I go to work. Now that I sit in the trailer, the only time I put my shoes on is whenever I have to go pee, because I have to go outside. <laughs> but I just hate, like, the social construct of shoes. I hate that we're required. You know what? No mask, <laughs> no shoes. How about that? Why do Why do they get to tell us? You know what? They don't get to tell us if we wear masks, so why do they get to tell us if we wear shoes? That's all I'm saying. No shoes, no shirt, no service. Fuck that shit. Why? Why do I have to wear shoes? My feet are perfectly acceptable. I could probably have a very Actually, high... Actually, you have pretty feet. Yeah. So. Yeah, I could sell feet things. <laughs> I'm just saying. I should. I should make oh money off gosh. that. Corey has, and I'm sorry, I love this child to death, and I think he's perfect. He has some of the ugliest toes I've ever seen. <laughs> but I, they're perfect, and I love him for him. But his toenails are straight. Like, I've never seen a toenail that's well, straight. That is something that I used to struggle with. It's and it's very hard to cut his toenails. I used to struggle with ingrown. Not 
Not paper where they got nasty, the, yeah, but like yeah. painful. They would yeah. get painful and then I'd have to like cut them. I have that problem. I don't really have that problem yes. anymore. After we went to the get our pedicures for so long, I, yeah. I, I they got it to a point where it was easy to manage. So. And I agree. It helped me too because I used to get bad and grow toenails, but now I don't. Yeah. And now I can get them. I can cut my own nails with no problem. So is it frustrating and annoying it was to spend all that money? It actually was it. Yeah, it got too expensive. Thing. I couldn't even imagine doing that now. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't let them touch me. The last time that I went in, they were like, "Oh, you can do your nails." It's like you're not fucking touching my nails. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yeah, I don't. I want to get a pet. Why? Okay. Can we make it normal to get a pedicure without a massage? I mean, you can, can do we that. just get? You just have to ask for our no nail massage. polish taken off. It. The problem is not the 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 service. The it problem is. is that you can't say no. You no, have a problem with telling them no They massage. get upset with me because I don't want a massage. That's perceived. It's not perceived because they sit there and talk back and forth to each other forever. And then they go, okay. And then they keep trying and asking me, are you sure you don't want just a foot well, massage? Well, it's because you're paying for it anyway. They're not going to make it I cheaper. Know. I don't. Okay. Can All we make perceived. it normal to just get nail polish and get your feet scrubbed? And not get a massage. Oh, the paraffin wax. I like the paraffin wax. I Love don't want a massage. It. And I definitely don't want a massage coming yeah, up my leg. I'm sure they will not remember the person that came in and asked for no massage, but you. Guarantee you. Guarantee you. you I could go in today and she would remember that I do not want a massage. But that's just good customer service. Like, it's. She that she it. remembers? Yeah. Like, that's like your bartender remembering agree. what drink you were, or your barista for that matter. My, I agree. My baristas remember my name now. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing. Okay. I'm so going to choose to see it as I'm a good thing. I'm waiting for the day for the coffee shop I go to every Saturday. I'm waiting for the day for them to say to me on the speaker, oh, you want this, this, and this. Oh, for Saturdays. Or, yeah. I, I go every Saturday. I have a slight advantage oh, wow. now that I have purple hair. <laughs> yes, this is true. I, this is going to sound so conceited, but I'm more recognizable than you. <laughs> uh. With my loud music, my dented car, and my purple hair. <laughs> well, and the people that work there that are there on the regular basis, yeah. they recognize me under a coach of the window. They don't know my name, but, but they do recognize that I was there last Saturday, or I come every Saturday. They don't have know me in my name yet. But this has only been going on for I will say, a year. I don't think I realized how much they recognized me until my boss went there and was <laughs> yeah. like, hey, you know Kelsey, right? <laughs> Do you know what she usually gets? That was, yeah, that's pretty bad. I was just like, oh no. You know what's so sad though? Okay, this is a secret, so I'm glad I've never spoken about where I work. We haven't. But we're getting a new building. Room that we haven't. You did tell me that last week. Apparently, or, that's like a huge fucking secret nobody's supposed to talk about, so I'm gonna talk about it on the internet. Um, we're getting a new building. Please don't get it. And where it's it cuts my drive in half, which is really nice. Okay. Um, but <laughs> I won't get to go to the same coffee shop. Oh. Oh no! I'm having a hard oh, time. Oh no! I'm like, do I get, <gasps> do I get a different job? Oh no! <laughs> I know it's so bad. What? I'm so upset. I'm glad because like I'll finally we'll get to work in like a building with plumbing again. But at the same time, I don't know if that's worth it. <laughs> to not be able to go to this. I mean, they have another coffee shop that's on the way that I can go to. That's not as on the way, but it's the same. Uh, it's the same company, the Rocket Brothers. It's the same company, but it's just a different store. There is not that many Rocket Brothers but there, there's only in two. Oklahoma. Yeah. But it's just Super frustrating careful. because the other one's not as good. I and agree also, they don't not. know me. I agree so. not. But, and they're slower. For some, they're harder to get maybe, into. Maybe, and if I tell, maybe if I tell my store that I'm gonna have to move next year, they'll send employees <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah, like, please. Just for you, <laughs> they'll start bumping up their employees over there. They're, I mean, I'm sure the the running cost of that one will significantly drop because oh they'll have a higher income. <laughs> I spent too much money on that. <laughs> I don't mind spending it on a local company, though. 
I don't need like it. the idea of getting an eight dollar coffee at Starbucks. Disgusting. Hate it because they have the throughput to not have to charge that much. They just do because they suck. But the local company where there's only two buildings and I, I I know a guy that knows the guy that owns the thing. <laughs> oh, I know that sounds crazy. Well, no, I know, you know but what it, it's, it's like? true. It's funny. I know the I, owner. I didn't know that I knew somebody that knew them. I yeah. will say that. But they make they make a good product. It's significantly <laughs> better than any other co- coffee shop in the area, including Starbucks, and. And it's a local company that directly benefits somebody that lives in the area. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I I agree with you. I like helping locals more than I like. I will always go to a small business if I can. Yeah. If I if there is a way for me to buy a product from a small business and and benefit a human being instead of a company, oh. I will. I don't. I, don't I agree. I don't care if it's a dropship company. You know what? Fuck. A what? As long as I don't have to pay more, I will directly benefit a human being. A dropship. Dropship companies is how people scam people. Oh, yeah, I don't like those. Nope, nope, nope. Because I got taken on one of those. Well, yeah. That's what I'm saying. If it was a good product and, like, it was actually cheaper than buying it on my own, then maybe I would invest in that. But actually... Can I just say, okay. I'm going to do a little plug right here. Because. On my Christian podcast? (laughs) I want to show you how hard... Oh, I'm waking up with Mike. Sorry. I want to show you how Holly Carden sends her packages out, and I think this is amazing. Look at the wrapping. Each puzzle is put into its own wrapping. I like the feel of these boxes. Is this not amazing? Because these have like almost like a almost a rubbery texture on it, yeah, or like a felty it does. softness, but like the box is still smooth. I it's isn't that cool? I, like I know. Stuff. I am a. Do they sell stickers? I am a freak for packaging and stuff. I but wish I could keep this sticker. I think you can. We should put it on the thing. <laughs> on the bo- I'll put one on the thing. Okay. <laughs> I like I like her logo too. I'm sorry, but I do. But isn't it cool how they wrap each individual did puzzle? Did you get this one too? I did. Okay. It's coming in the mail. I like the art style too. I she does this, and it's from a real place. And you can actually she'll take you on tour, like on Instagram, she'll take oh, you on the, tour of the place way. where it comes from. This and then they draw it out, the whole scene and everything. Mm. It's very cool. So I don't have any place on my shelves. So. Yes, I am definitely. I thought, okay, Kelsey doesn't like this puzzle, but I really do. So what I'm buying them, and about? I'll just do it in my house oh my and God. be on my own. Because I love these puzzles. I put together like 90% of this puzzle. What are you talking about? I know. You're like, it's so little. But I think it's because it's, it's, yeah. What if we turned it sideways? I'm not seeing it's so little as in a negative thing. It's so little. like It's so hard to find pieces because you're upside down. Yeah. And also, like, how the fuck did you put this much detail in this small of a puzzle? Like, it's impossible. I love that she took so much time to figure out how to do a good quality puzzle too because she actually scoured and took feedback and made sure that the puzzle pieces were thick she didn't make a puzzle just to capitalize on puzzles right she made a puzzle to actually for puzzlers you see that a lot especially with like the the dnd community or ttrpg community where people make products just to capitalize on people being nerds that love that yeah, thing. Right. Like dice dice is a good example. A lot of people got into dice oh, making because yeah. people got into D D and some people are really shitty at it because yeah. they just want to make a quick buck. And it's like fuck you, we're not gonna give I'll give you a better example. Okay. Let me just update you okay. on the book talk drama. Oh my gosh. This week on Book Talk, I don't I don't even know the specifics because like okay. I've only seen reactions because I never see the actual drama. Which yeah, I think is a good thing. Um, okay, so step one. Okay. There was a company that was gonna come in and make a tab on on um, TikTok to highlight and promote books. Okay. This was run by a publishing company who would obviously only highlight and promote their books to get better sales. Oh. Everybody on BookTok was like, good fucking luck. We're yeah. not going to pay attention. That I think that dropped. I don't know if that's still happening. It's probably still happening. Nobody cares. Um, 
what was the other thing? Then there was a guy that came on Booktop and was like, every chick on Booktop's gonna love me because I have the bod. Ew. Ew. And he thought he was gonna get a bunch of views and Ew. everybody on Booktop was like, good fucking luck, get the fuck out. Yeah. And then I guess he tried to clap back and be like, you guys are so mean to me, how dare you bully me? And they're like, oh. no, 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 no. Just because we don't find your attitude attractive doesn't mean we're bullying you. I don't know the full drama, Ugh. but that's the gist of yeah. what I got. And the chick was like, good luck. You can't come for book talk. <laughs> They're forced to be reckoned with. And then there was a chick on book talk who was like, all of the the book recommendations, this one, this one oof, went strong. She said, all of the book talk recommendations are bad and I can tell that you don't read classic literature. That's the gist of what she said. I'm not going to directly Ooh. quote it because I've seen it so many times and I'm sick of hearing it. Um, it's fighting words. So a lot of people were like, classic literature is not the be all and all of right. literature. Actually in fact a lot of it's shitty and also a lot of classic literature is very bad for people of color. It's very white centric and a lot of the people of color in classic literature are slaves or villains or you know just there to fill a slot so just because somebody wrote it a long time ago does not make it good and well and it's not always it <laughs> wasn't good at the time that it came out it was only good she, the only person she quoted was shakespeare which is uh, what? questionable because when he came out, he was basically the Roman, the smut of the time. Yeah. Um, anyway, and so she doubled down. Oh, Lord. And then she did the backpedal, like you do. Yeah. Which, it was funny watching people predict it. And then I guess she's trying to recover, and it's not working. Nobody gives a shit anymore. Oh, my gosh. And it's just, that's, oh, God. So it's, it's, uh, it's sad because like, a lot of people are reacting to it. Instead of being like, you're a fucking bitch, fuck off. They were like, listen. You're young, you're dumb, it's okay, you'll grow out of it. <laughs> and I think that just explains book talk. We're like, it's okay, it's okay, sweetie, you'll get over it. <laughs> See, and that's, it's another thing, you can have a teachable moment. And, that, and that's the thing is like, she got upset because a lot of people were be like, you know what, I have a degree. Yeah. I have read all of the classical literature and it sucks. I like smut, and there's nothing wrong with that, and I will continue to recommend it. But why is it okay to do that, but not okay to like classicals? It's not, and not it's like not, everybody, the smut. Like, you can like classicals. Nobody's saying you can't like oh, classicals. Okay. The problem we they had with her right. is that she was like, I can tell by your reading preferences that you've never read class, classicals. Oh, okay. That's, that's where they had a problem. Yeah, that's an insult. Because it's, okay. it's the same okay. thing where like a, like a month ago or so, people were upset because some chick got on there and said that if you read audiobooks, then you're not a reader. Uh, and it's like, right. go fuck yourself. That's ableism. What about people that are... Uh, yeah, it's, it's straight. It's straight ableism. <laughs> straight able. I can't, It's ignorance. It's I, not ableism. It's it, ignorance. No, it's ableism. It's that's, that's exactly what ableism is: is not understanding that people do not have the same abilities as you. I think ableism is when you do know and you just say it because you. No, that's how you actually it, feel. A lot of ableism comes from ignorance. Okay. A lot of it does. I'm not saying that person's choosing to be ableist. They just okay. are. Um. I, there, there's it's a teachable it's, moment. It is, and <laughs> that's my new word for the day. And that's the thing that I think I love about book talk is, sure, there's a couple of people that'll be like, "Fuck you, you're cunt, whatever," <laughs> but a lot of them will come back and be like, "Let me explain to you how okay. what you said is offensive, wrong, and not okay." And the problem is that people see that as an attack, I guess. Yeah having constructive criticism because a lot of people on book talk are very well educated right. they read a lot of fucking books obviously so they know how to have a constructive criticism just because you read a lot of books does not mean you're educated mm, i it mean doesn't. that's kind of the definition it doesn't. it doesn't it depends on what kind of books and it well, it, for sure it doesn't but mean that you're educated it just means that you read a lot of books I guess it means you're more of an intellectual because mm. intelligence is purely from nope. learning and you are only ever learning if you're reading books. You can be a really bad person and just read romance books. Well, sure. There's. I'm just saying a lot of it people mean on book talk are very intelligent <laughs> okay. and educated because they spend a lot of time. Because the thing, 
people put down romance books, and let me tell you, I don't put down. I, I wasn't putting I'm not down romance you books. I'm saying I of, read the smut too. I'm not saying you do. I'm <laughs> saying a lot of people do, but what you don't understand is the romance books are not. I mean, they are about romance, but yes, like the thing that I enjoy about romance books is it's about the human experience, and it's about learning how to understand and relate to people and mm. find romantic connections in different and unique <clears throat> ways. I think it's a fantasy world. It's a fantasy world. Because not everything in romance books is... I mean, that's not what you want in real life. Stop talking in extremes. I'm saying I'm a not. lot. You, you said not everything, and I didn't say everything. I said a lot of. Okay. Uh, the thing that I enjoy right. from romance books is the human experience is expressed in all of romance. Almost all romance books is about the human experience because it's not always aliens. Yeah. But I'm just saying a lot of romance books is about the human experience and about relating to other people and dealing with your emotions and processing them in a, in the context of romance sure whatever of the writer but a lot of the times yeah. it'll it'll be like what i i've found interesting more recently is like the romance books where it's like the only thing keeping these two people apart is that he happens to be my brother's best friend and it's like what a weird construct yeah that which actually happens, if your but... brother loves somebody as a friend you're not allowed to love them romantically what a weird social construct and that's what I get out of romance books, is like okay. the idea of how society inflicts on our personal relationships and how those two conflict. So to me, that's highly intellectual, okay. right? And sure, they're fucking right now, but like... And see, that's where, whenever I say romance I books, that's what I'm talking about. Is You're talking all about of erotica. The... I'm not talking no. about just erotica. No. I'm talking erotica about... no, is... No, I don't do that. Well, I, but... but people mistake the two, right? You're talking about when they're fucking, that's erotica. When, when they're, I'm talking about relationships, I'm that's even, romance. I'm talking about, you know, whenever they kiss or touch or... It's just, sometimes the way they describe it, it's like, okay. Well, I mean... You had to go to the thesaurus to find like, a different word. and It just gets too detailed That's sometimes. a whole different side of book talk. And it's like, okay, could you not just say they held hands but that's instead the of all is, the... But that's like, there's different levels, right? There's... Right, you're talking about the relationship part of it. And yeah, the, I mean, the human part of it. Specific words don't bother right. me. I, there are a lot of people on Book Talk who have like lists of like, if I see this word, I'll stop <laughs> reading because I just can't. Like, I don't have a problem with any. Like, there's a few words that I'm like, that's weird. No, I maybe just not. Read, like, like, I don't know. I spent this last week thing. reading a book, and it was the second one. Are you talking about the Colleen Hoover books? Okay. I don't like those. So. I spent the last week reading the second one because I thought, ooh, I get to find out what happened. And I was a I, little disappointed. I was disappointed in her first book. That half the book was from the first book. She copied and pasted the yeah. notes from the first book to the second book. And I'm like, I understand why she did it. But I think she could have done it in a different way. Well, she's also a big published, big published author too. So like, but she doesn't have any responsibility. I just, to me, it was like, it, and she actually mentioned in the book that she did it because of TikTok, or because of book talk. Okay, but that's a cop out too. It and I just I felt like she could have done so much more with that book, the second book, than what she did. She did give it the Atlas side of it. And I think that was a great thing because she went back to their teenage years and showed what he was going through. Right. And I liked Which that is part. A far more interesting story, right. in my opinion. But she didn't have to put all of the letter exactly in yeah, of what Lily went through. So it was it was like, okay, I could have gone back to the first book and read reread her letters if I really wanted well, to know. I mean, you can't assume that everybody that reads your second book is going to read the first one either. Yeah, but I just, I felt like she could have done so much more if she hadn't done that because she would have had more room. <laughs> huh, but I mean, it's not like a book has a designated space. Like, no, but that's a half the book space. was... I know, the but I'm just saying, like, saying that you ran and it's out like, of room in a book is silly. You, can't, you could have, you can't run it. You could have taken their lives a little bit further had you not redone all that. Well, I don't and think I, there was like too much detail in. I don't think she had any intention to take it further. I don't know. It just. Well, no, she didn't have any intention of writing the second book. But I, I've run into but this. I was a little disappointed. But 
I'm trying to find another book right now that I can get into that I like, and I don't know how to do that. Ooh, actually I can send you an app. 